binary vanadium oxide VO2 is really a spectacular example of a material undergoing an MIT or metal into the transition. Um, essentially what happens is as you heat the material up, it suddenly and dramatically goes from being um, insulator, so think like wood or rubber, to being a metal, think like copper or steel. So what we've been trying to do is trying to figure out how scaling to nanoscale dimensions uh, alters the temperature at which, which this phase transition happens, the magnitude of the phase transition, and then trying to figure out also what the technological implications for this phase transition might be. Perhaps the simplest possible um, application you can imagine is in window coatings. If it gets really hot outside, to save on air conditioning costs, you'd like a window coating that lets in visible light so you can still see through the window, but blocks infrared light, so it blocks the sunlight from heating up the building. And vanadium oxide can do that. Okay. And then once it gets cold again, it lets sunlight through, so it, it allows the building to be heated, so it decreases heating costs. So what exactly is going on in the phase transition? The low temperature phase uh, has alternating short and long vanadium-vanadium bonds, and then as you heat it up, there's a very subtle, small change, and all the bonds become equidistant, and, it, and, the, uh, and the system is less canted, um, and you get a far more symmetric structure. We and others have been exploring how we could shift the phase transition from 67 degrees Celsius where it happens in the bulk to lower temperatures to, to closer down to room temperature uh, so we can use it for more practical applications. What we've been trying to do is really exploring the power of small, right? So what happens when you scale materials to, to finite size, to nanoscale dimensions? What we find is we can depress by a very large amount, the phase transition temperature, we can even push it below room temperature just by scaling the materials to nanostructure dimensions. Another big benefit we get from making VO2 small is that we can make materials that are almost perfect, okay? And so we can start to investigate single domain behavior in these materials. So how do we make these objects small? Louisa Whitaker, a PhD student in my research group, will explain to you uh, how we make vanadium oxide nanostructures in our labs here at UB. So there are two different synthetic methods for making VO2 nanostructures. The first one involves the simple use of a chemical vapor transport method in which we're going to load VO2 powder in the middle of a, of a, of a furnace. And at this point, we're going to heat it up. We're going to evaporate VO2 powder at low pressures. And we're going to have a carrier flow gas that is going to go through downstream the furnace, and we're going to have a weighted substrate in which we're going to recollect high crystalline VO2 nanostructures. The second method involves the use of an vanadium oxide precursor, which is going to be loaded into a hydrothermal reaction vessel. This is going to be heated up at low temperatures and high pressures above the boiling point of water. At this point, we're going to use V205, which is a layer structure. We're going to load it into the hydrothermal reaction vessel with the aid of a halophilic alcohol, which is going to help us break down V205 into VO2 nanostructures. After the hydrothermal process is done, we're going to have different nanostructures with varying morphologies and dimensions, such as wires, stars, spheres, belts, depending on what we add inside the hydrothermal reaction vessel. Now, VO2 is not the only material that undergoes a phase transition. My colleague Chris Patris is going to be telling you a little bit more about other materials as well. So we've also been exploring these non-stoichiometric vanadium oxide bronzes. And these materials are very interesting because they possess a V4 and V5 plus sites in the material. Now in principle, they should show the same electronic instabilities that are responsible for the phase transition in VO2, but are often hampered by the fact that there are defects and impurities in the bulk materials. When we synthesize them as nanowires using hydrothermal methods explained by my colleague Louisa, we obtain long, perfectly crystalline little slabs of material. Now take for example KXV205. Now this structure is derived from V205 and at these high pressures inside the hydrothermal reaction potassium ions can intercalate into alternating layers, therefore creating a sandwich structure of KXV205. Next, we measure the resistance of these individual nanowires. And as we heat the material up, the resistance starts to drop slightly. But then at a certain temperature, there's a dramatic drop in the resistance as the material turns into a metallic state. 
Upon cooling from high temperature to low temperature, we see a jump back up in the resistance and an observable hysteresis between the two transitions. Even though vanadium oxides have been studied for more than 50 years now, the surprises really never seem to stop coming. We know now that given the extent of control that we've established over the phase transition temperature and hysteresis, we're closer today to real world applications in homes, buildings, electronics than we've ever been. As new tools start to become available, both experimental and theoretical, uh, we're starting to learn a whole lot more about the fundamental basis for uh, the phase transition. Our research here at UB was supported by the National Science Foundation and by the Research Corporation for Science Advancement. Thank you for watching.